the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Johnson, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Director Ray, isn't it true that the FBI prepared a formal intent with a threat of setting protest by Black Lives Matter protest in Washington, D.C.? Sorry, Congressman, I'm having a hard time getting a clear signal. Would you mind repeating the question? I'm sorry, isn't it the FBI prepared a formal intelligence bulletin with a threat assessment in advance of the summer 2020 protest by Black Lives Matter? I'm, I'm not aware of whether that's accurate in or not, sir. DC. Of course, whenever there is a high profile rally on the ellipse, which is to be attended by the President of the United States, correct? Uh, sir, I know that when there are certain events that are specifically designated as NSSE events or so called SEER events, uh, which is a decision that's made by, I think, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, it is not unusual for the FBI to be asked in connection with those events to do a formal threat assessment. So I'm not okay, sure well, let me ask you this. in the instances here. Let me ask you this. The FBI did not produce a formal intelligence bulletin or a threat assessment in preparation for the January 6th insurrection, correct? Well, we did, we did produce uh, I think a dozen plus intelligence products, well, uh, including a formal, a, a formal intelligence bulletin you did not produce. Is that correct? Well, I, we may just be inadvertently talking past each other on specific terms for specific kinds of intelligence products. We certainly put out a, a number of intelligence products, finished intelligence products, including two joint intelligence bulletins that I can think of, uh, as well as some others that were also finished you, products. You, now, there is, there is a difference between those briefings that you're talking about and a, a formal intelligence bulletin produced in conjunction with the Department of Homeland Security, correct? Well, we did do formal intelligence bulletins with Department of Homeland Security. Uh, I in know preparation. I can think of at least two off top of In preparation well, uh, over the six. Over the course of one in preparation, did not do one in preparation for January six. Correct. Not specifically for the January six certification All right. itself. I think that's now, the distinction. Now the FBI yeah. in uh, twenty twenty December had received a packet of material from the New York Police Department that documented the real possibility that there would be violence at the Capitol on January 6th. And leading up to January 6th, based on intelligence that there was a real potential for violence in Washington, D.C. on that date, the FBI visited dozens of extremists already under investigation to discourage them from traveling to Washington, D.C. Isn't that correct? Uh, I don't know about the NYPD product because that, that's not ringing a bell as I sit here right now. But in terms of approaching individuals before January 6th, I don't know whether it was dozens, but I know there were individuals that we had inter interaction with. And my understanding is that none of those people had indicated an intention to attack the Capitol, certainly. But All right, well, let me, let, me move, let, me, let me move on. On January 5th, the FBI field office in Norfolk, Virginia, issued a situational information report warning of an online post that discussed specific calls for violence against Congress on January 6th. And Director Ray, it's crystal clear to me that the FBI knew or certainly had reason to know that there was going to be violence at the Capitol on January 6th. And it's crystal clear that the FBI was more concerned about Black Lives Matter protesters in Washington, D.C. than it was about armed conflict by violent and armed Proud Boys and Oath Keepers descending on the United States Capitol. It's almost like the FBI wanted to look the other way 
so that the insurrection insurrection could uh, could proceed in its effort to stop the certification of the presidential election. That's what it appears to me and a lot of other people who are looking at this situation. Well, sir, I, I'm sorry if it appears that way. I, I, I don't agree with the characterization, but I can assure you that we are absolutely determined to make sure that nothing like what happened on January 6th ever happens again. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we elevated, I elevated, uh, racially motivated violent extremism, specifically racially motivated violent extremism, advocating for the superiority of the white race to uh, our highest threat priority in the summer of 2019, doubled the number of investigations we had into that type of threat and the number of arrests. But clearly, there's a lot more work to be done, and you can be sure the men and women of the FBI are absolutely determined to get it done. Thank you, sir, and I yield back. The, uh, the FBI director has asked for a short five-minute recess, so I declare that the committee is in recess for five minutes. Committee stands in recess for five minutes.
The committee is about to get started. The committee will come to order. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. That is an absolute flat out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out. How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen, Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20-hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it, according to investigators? They insist he was intentionally targeting white, military-looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black-on-white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals, no matter what color they are? When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th, and they have to talk about things that divide us on, uh, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong, but that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. Yeah. You know, you look at January 6th. Everybody has said it was a tragic day. It never should have yep. happened. They wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But, you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson. He looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes, and he was like something like 40% of the people were just let in by Capitol Police. But they don't talk about any of that. And you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hip hypocrites on this. They did, they, last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focused on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, that, that, there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, the, the, where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. And I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings and cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that 
that January 6th is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage ap across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went. They're essentially pitting Americans against one another by labeling it ba via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. And I don't agree with it. And I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG, DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th. And they put out a national call and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people, right? And so a lot of this uh, the southern, the relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out and the media regurgitate that. And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they, they have proven themselves to be uh, you know, not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So um, is white supremacy, is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most, uh, biggest threat to, to America? I think that's overblown. And I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day-to-day -day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has, has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure it does in certain areas. But is the, is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.